makeup friends! So recently I posted my eyeshadow palette declutter video and today's the logical follow-up. It is my eyeshadow palette collection. Now I want to warn you, we've got 150 palettes to get through, so be sure to have a drink, grab a snack, get nice and comfy. We're going to be here a while, so let's get into this. So I've got all of my BH palettes set out here first, so we're going to go through those and then I've got other piles that we will get to, but by far my biggest collection is BH, so I wanted to go through these first. So let's start off with the birthstone palettes. So I do have all 11 so far and they'll be releasing December in two days from the date that I'm filming this video at any rate and I will be picking that one up so I will have the complete collection. Now I just did a palette declutter earlier today and I did film that. I expect that the declutter is going to go up before this video so there are some of these that I don't intend to keep beyond my filming purposes for them. Um, but we're just going to go through all 11 really quickly and then move on from there. So if you're curious which ones I'm not keeping, that will be in the declutter video. So first up for January, there was Garnet. And so all of these palettes have this same seven pan layout. There is a mix of mattes and shimmers in all of them. And then this larger pan here is the corresponding actual birthstone shade. So this one obviously is Garnet and then each palette also has a pressed glitter in it. So that was the color story for January. February is Amethyst. This is Barry's birthstone. This one was quite pretty. And I actually really liked the pressed glitter in here. I am not typically a huge fan of pressed glitters. Like I don't seek them out, but some of them are made better than others. And the BH formula is far superior to many other brands. So this is Aquamarine for March. The reason I say that about the pressed glitters is that these ones just apply really nicely. They're not super dry in the pan and they actually feel rather smooth instead of like super gritty. So I don't really mind them all that much, which is good because like I said, we get one in each one of these palettes. So Diamond is for April. This is my son's birth month. I like this silver. It's just so impactful, and even this one is as well. It's really pretty, and I like the black in this one has that like shimmery aspect to it as well. It's not just a matte black. I think it just plays really nice with all the dimension that's going on in this palette. And this is my daughter's birth month, May. So emerald is her birthstone, and there was the color story for that month. And then June, I was really curious to see what they would do for Pearl. This is my birth month. And I was actually quite pleased with what they did. They turned it into a very neutral palette, but it really does bring in all the colors that you find in like seashells and whatnot for um, oysters. I was about to say clams, but oysters, where pearls emanate from. Uh, and I think they did a really great job with this. And I actually really like this palette. And I like that this one is like a mother of pearl kind of color. It's not a stark white. It's a bit creamier than that. And I just, I think that they really nailed the color story with this one. Next up we have July, which is Ruby. And there we have it. This would be a fun pressed glitter for Christmas time. This like true red over here. August, Peridot, Peridot. Apparently it is actually Peridot, but Peridot just sounds so much better to me, so <laughs> I prefer to say Peridot. And there's that one. I actually really liked this color story as well. I thought that the yellow really made everything else just sort of gel together because it really pulls out the yellow that's in these two greens. And then September is Sapphire, and this one was just so beautiful. I really like the addition of the green in there. It just plays really nicely. And then this pressed glitter has like little different colors in there, little bits of micro glitter. And I just thought this one was so pretty. And then another one I was curious about how they would handle it was Opal for October. And 
I think they did a good job. They pulled all the different colors that you would find in an opal that sort of, um, oh, what is the word? I want to say effervescence, but that's not the word. Oh gosh, iridescence. There it is, iridescence. So you've got like a very muted, very pastel, almost spectrum here. I don't really like this color story personally. I just don't like how pastels look on me, but in terms of representing opal, I think they did a good job with this one. And then November is citrine, and unfortunately, because I sprained my back as badly as I did, and then work blew up, and it's just, November literally just flew by in the blink of an eye. I didn't get a chance to actually review this one, and in fact, I haven't actually worn it yet, or even swatched it, so it's beautiful though like it just makes me think of sunflowers and i just i love it i'm so happy with this one i can't wait to play with it um, but like i said november just escaped me and then december is getting released soon and i will purchase that when it is released okay but they did release a large christmas palette as well the lit list there were some other palettes i think they had like a three pan and then a smaller palette as well but i just picked up the one and this palette is bananas beautiful. It is so good. I thought that this shade up here was pressed glitter as well, but it's not. It's just like super reflective metallic. And then this red really is the only pressed glitter that's in there. But like I said, you can see just how like easy they are to work with. I just think they're really, really nice for being pressed glitters. I think it's so pretty. But this palette I am just so happy with. I love the mix of colors in there, but there's so many neutral options as well, so you can really take it any way. You can make it as colorful as you want, or you can make it toned down and wear it to the office, whatever you want to do with that. And I just think it's such a pretty, pretty palette. I'm so happy with this one. And this little guy, I think I've talked about this one before. This is the Flower Power, and it's just like the itsy bitsiest little pans and yet they haven't like skimped on the quality of these shadows at all. They perform every bit as nicely as like the shadows in here. Again, you have that nice mix of mattes and like satiny shimmer shadows, a nice blend of colors and neutral options, and a good like range of depth as well. So I really like this palette. So I did pick up a few of these. Um, I don't what, what were they called? The Say It Loud or something? I can't remember what the collection was called, but see they were going a little risque with these ones but this one just had a really nice deep dark color story so I wanted to keep that one especially for this blue and this purple here I just think they're so pretty and then low-key love you is just so pretty and that red in the middle is gorgeous it's a true red it doesn't blend out pink or anything of that sort it just stays that color and I just love that it plays up the green on my eyes so nicely. And then I do have quite a few of their Weekender palettes. As you watch the declutter, you will see that I had even more, but I have sort of narrowed it down. So Hanging in Hawaii is a very neutral palette, but very, very pretty. And I love the pinks that are in here as well. Chillin' in Chicago, this is the exact same as um, Amalfi. Amor and Amalfi, I think it's called now. It's the exact same colors. So I actually gifted that one on. I did a giveaway and one of you guys won that. Uh, so I just kept the Chillin' in Chicago. I've got the Party in Puerto Rico. And this one's just really fun with all those really nice bright colors. And again, the mix of the mattes and the shimmers really sells me on these palettes as well. Blueberry Muffin. This was the palette that started it all with BH. This is the very first one that I tried from them. I hate, really hate the iridescent background because you just can't see the colors properly. But suffice it to say, it's beautiful. It is not your 1980s blue eyeshadow palette at all. It's got a nice like mix of shades in here that you can really deepen everything up with. Nothing looks too icy on the eyes. It's just beautiful. And that led me quickly to picking up Avocado Toast. Again, with the iridescent background, but another beautiful palette. And then we've got Mimosa. 
This one I do find I need to pair it with something else simply because it's really missing a really deeper um, shadow to really ground looks. It's fun in summer, but I do find that I'd like a nice like deeper burgundy shade or something to just add a bit more dimension than what this palette on its own offers. Got, what is this one? Passion in Paris. And this one's really pretty. I got this at the same time as the Puerto Rico palette, and I really thought I'd like Puerto Rico better, but this one, it just, mm, it just does it for me, especially this beautiful cobalt shade here. Love that. And then I got Love in London, just a deeper neutral palette. It's great for winter. And then lastly is Smitten in Switzerland. This one, I don't always know what to do with it, if I'm being perfectly honest, and yet I really do like how grungy and earthy all of these matte shades are. So I keep it because I do think it's actually really pretty. It's just sometimes when I look at it, I get a little stuck. So this isn't one that I use all the time, but there are some really pretty shades in here, like this one, Glacier Express. Just a really nice, deep, like, silvery taupe. Hopefully the lighting is okay in here. I've got as many lights going as I can, but it'd be great to have one behind me. I just don't have any room for that. I did pick up all of their Sweet Shop palettes, but I have decluttered, I think, just one of them. But I kept Pistachio. You can see from the pans that I really don't get a lot of use out of these, but I do like to have them on hand because if I want to do a green look or an orange look, as the case may be, I have the shades to choose from. And again, you can't knock the performance of these palettes at all. And there's bubblegum. The one I got rid of was cotton candy. It was just very pastel and just not my wheelhouse at all. This one here is sugar cone. I probably don't need to keep this because I have so many neutral palettes, but I really do like these these shades and these shimmers are just so nice as well. Like considering the price point for BH, I'm just blown away with how consistently good their shadows are. And then this one here is cherry on top, which is beautiful and well, oh, I'll put it into frame. How's that? This is the one that I've got the most use out of. And then two more BH palettes. So this one was the Lunar New Year palette from earlier in this year. And this was done in collaboration with Shishi Yang. And I think she did a fantastic job. It's so beautiful. And like this pressed glitter here is like this duochromatic, just peachy green beauty. It's, oh, it's so beautiful. And then this gold over here, oh please. There's just so many different ways you can take this palette. And I think it's so beautiful. And again, these reds, especially this one here, stay true to that color, which I really, really like. And then arguably my favorite of the BH palettes is the BFF palette, which was done in collaboration with Alondra and Elsie. I'm not familiar with them, to be honest, but they did a, did a crack job at picking shades for this palette because this is just so beautiful. Again, you have all those nice neutral options in there so you can just do a very easy office appropriate look, but there's also these really fun punchy blues. This one is like a really icy pink. There's just so many beautiful shades in here. And again, the quality in here is every bit as good as the other palettes. So I love this one. All right, let's move on to Natasha Denona. So I have a few of her minis. Again, watch the declutter if you wanna see what I had before versus what I have now. So these are the three little five pin minis that I kept. So this one is the mini gold, which I just think is so pretty. Basically any palette that has an olive in it is gonna attract my attention. That's, I'm pretty easy to please. There's that one. And then Mini Glam. I'm sad, I don't know what happened to it, but a little chunk is missing. 
but this one's just so pretty and just so easy like it's just completely thoughtless and just don't have to think about your makeup which most days I really appreciate because I just have too many other things to think about and then this one is mini metropolis again a palette that I actually did film with and then never ended up doing the actual review part of it because November was just not my month shall we say oh there's another one sorry this one was hiding this is what is it called mini xenon this one's kind of an interesting take for uh, Natasha Denona. She's not usually... I don't think of this kind of color story when I think of Natasha Denona, and yet I do like it. I just, when I did a review on it, um, I was saying that I think a dark base would really help because this black matte shade did fade on me quite quickly um, when I wore this one. But other than that, I really had no issues with blendability, and this silver is... So pretty. Gotta love just a true metallic silver. Don't wear it very often, but when I do, I always question why I don't wear it more often because it's so pretty. So then the other five pans that I have, this is the Cranberry palette. And I think this one's just so, so pretty. Especially this like gorgeous shimmery pink shade. I'm not sure these lights are really doing much justice, unfortunately, but I'm trying to get it as best I can. So there's that one. And then this one, I think it's just a number. Yeah, palette number seven. The packaging, not my favorite on this. I much prefer this packaging. I just think it looks a little bit more luxe considering the price you pay. But the shadows themselves make up for what the packaging lacks because these are so pretty it's not really a palette that i wear on its own but it's so nice to like pair these with other matte shadows again that like gorgeous metallic taupe shade and this like i don't even know what color that is but it's beautiful but this is one that i I'm still meaning to do a review on. I might do like a get ready with me and include it in there. This is the new Glam Face Palette. I got it in the light version. So the neutral shadows are right up my alley. And although this one isn't very deep, it's deep enough on me. And then there's the two cheek products here. This highlighter is really pretty. It's like just a nice tone to it as well. Like it's got a nice strong... <laughs> ah, like gold sort of undertone to it. What, what just happened to the lighting? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. The only thing I don't really love about this palette is the blush. I really like the color of it, but I don't really like the texture. It is, it's a cream, like a cream to powder kind of deal, but I just find that it's a little bit tricky to work with. It doesn't pick up all that well. And so I'm just, I'm still on that like learning curve phase with it. Just still trying to figure out the best way to apply it without like digging product out and then applying it from there. But like once, oh gosh, once it is blended onto the cheeks, it is very pretty. It's a very natural looking blush. I'm just not wild on the formula of it, but the rest of the palette is beautiful. And then we've got the retro palette. In this color story as soon as I saw it I knew I was going to be picking this one up because these colors are right up my alley you can see that I've got some good use out of it already but these I just find are very flattering on my skin tone there's that one and then the glam palette was never at risk of being decluttered because I just think it's so pretty again just one of those palettes that you don't have to expend a ton of energy trying to figure out how to pair things how to make it work. It just takes all the guesswork out for you. And then this is the Sunrise palette. I really like this like midi sized palette of hers. Big fan of that. I hope she continues to release those. So there is the Sunrise. And then lastly, I have the gold palette here. Again, a very neutral palette, but with the inclusion of some really pretty and somewhat unexpected shades like this one here and this duochromatic tone up here and then even this nice cream to uh, powder 
matte formula over here. It's a really pretty palette. Talk about these three Dior palettes here. So this one is Pink Corolle. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not. I haven't actually worn this one yet. I think it's so pretty and I keep meaning to and I keep getting sidetracked by other things, but it is such a pretty color story and I really do like the formula on these. And I find that a lot of times, especially shimmer shadows on like luxury eyeshadows just are very lackluster. They just play it so safe, but not Dior. Dior is bringing their A game and I really appreciate that. But also their mattes are really nice too. They just blend really easily. And they layer up really nicely as well with each other. So that one's pink Corolle or Corolle, I don't know how to say it. I'm not even gonna pretend that I know. This one is Soft Cashmere, which is, again, is just one of those like beautiful neutral palettes that you don't need to fuss over, and yet it's not boring at all. Again, that like beautiful shimmery satin shadow there. It's just no, no room for complaint on these ones. And then the last one that I have is Tutu. And again, just another beautiful, cooler toned but neutral palette as well. So let's bring these ones into frame and these are all of my Odin's Eye palettes that I have kept. I don't know how to pronounce it though, so <laughs> Sol, I'm going to call it Sol Main. It probably is pronounced differently because it has a little circle above the A and I don't even know what that's called, but at any rate we'll call it the Sol Main palette and there she is. And then I've got the three that they most recently released here. These were done in collaboration. So we've got Tina from The Fancy Face and Annette. I think she's Annette's Makeup Corner, I believe. And then Judy. So I'll put their names on the screens, but let's take a look at their palettes because these are all so beautiful. And again, it's just unfortunate that life got in the way and I didn't do like a dedicated review video to these because they are beautiful. I'm just so, so proud of them. I have been following Tina and Annette for quite some time. Judy was a new find for me, but I'm also following her now. And this palette is right up my alley with those nice warm tones that are in there. This one is so pretty. I mean, they're all pretty, but just that color story really gets me. And then Annette's is the Giant Wolves palette. And again, it's beautiful. And then I do have two from the Saga of Freya that they released earlier this summer. So this one is the Cat's Breath palette. I really like the color story in here. I love the play of orange and turquoise. I just think it's such a pretty combo. And then this one here is the um, Freya Saga palette. And there's two palettes in one, and this color story is right up my alley again. And then there's this guy over here, and again, that orange, especially paired with that green. They're just, an, it's an unexpected combo, but it looks so pretty together. All right, so now let's talk Kaleidos makeup. So I have, I think, all but one of their Futurism palettes. So we'll just go through there quickly. They have one that was discontinued that I never got my hands on, unfortunately, so that's the one that's missing, but this one is Futurism 1 Sci-Fi Green. Oh, I love that color story so much. And this black is like bananas pigmented. It is so good. I remember, it's got to be at least a year ago, maybe even two years ago, I did like a battle of the matte black shadows and I'm pretty sure this is the one that won just being like the truest and just most pigmented and yet despite being that pigmented it blends really nicely as well so I love this palette and then we've got Futurism 2 Cyber Bronze shades in there sometimes have a little bit of difficulty working with the um, silver just mixed with the rest of these but I take the silver out, the rest of it makes a lot of sense to me. The silver's pretty, don't get me wrong, but I just, I have a hard time working with it with these 
colors, but I can pull it for other palettes. And then we've got Futurism 3 is this one here, Astro Pink. This is another, I mean, they're all beautiful, but I love that the black in here has that like little bit of sparkle in it just to bring something different to the table. But this one's just a gorgeous palette. And then, do we have, I think I'm missing Futurism 4. So this one's Futurism 5. This is Electro Turquoise. So again, you see that play of the turquoise and the orange, which I just think is so fun. It's such a flattering color combo. And then Futurism 6 is Lunar Lavender. I really like this one. I do kind of wish that this was like a deep purple rather than a deep brown, but regardless, these shades are just so nice to work with. And then finally, Futurism, what would this be? 7, Sashimi City. And this one is so pretty. But anyways, let's move on. This one's Flower Punk. And this one was sent to me in PR, which I'm very, very grateful for. And I love this palette, especially like this portion of it. But you can do so much with this palette and it's, oh, you can do like a monochromatic look with just like these. You can mix and match them. This like, oh my gosh, like hold on to your butts. Like that's so beautiful. I feel like the lighting is not doing it justice. Oh. But it's so beautiful. And then we've got the Escape Pod palette. And I really like this, like especially if you're newer to color because there are like these neutral options in here, but there's also just some really fun colors to play with. So you can really like just go neutral on like the upper lid and then just run a bright color along the lower lash line or put one of these like shimmery color ones on the inner corner just to give something a little unexpected and different, but you can also go like balls to the wall with color with this. Like there's just so many different ways to play with it and I think it's so pretty. And then last, but certainly not least, is Club Nebula. And this was the uh, collaboration between Kaleidos and Angelica Neekfist. And she did such an incredible job on this color story. It is so beautiful. I love this row of mattes and then well like these five mattes in here are just mm. and then this like grass green. Oh so beautiful. And then you can like layer these shimmery shadows on top of the mattes and it's going to change how everything looks. And of course the quality is just like all of these Kaleidos palettes. Kaleidos, Kaleidos, uh, I don't know. Um, they're all just so beautiful. Like these mattes are super pigmented, but really blendable and the shimmers last all day. So I love my Kaleidos palettes. And let's talk about Viseart. So I have come to the decision or the conclusion, I guess, that it's this size palette from Viseart that really makes my heart happy. I've had their like little mini ones, I've had their six pan palettes, and then I've had the smaller ones that look like this, but just the smaller version of it. And I don't like those ones as much. These ones just, they get the job done. I've never tried any of their larger palettes. I would love to, uh, but these ones so far are my favorite. So this one is Violette, and like this purple is just, oh, so beautiful. And I love that the other mattes up here all have a little bit of a purple undertone to it. So this actually becomes a rather monochromatic palette, but in a really interesting and different way. And then we have Soleil La Plage. Again, neutral, but with some like fun pops in there, especially these two. And then the yellow down here. And then the newest one that I've picked up is Cashmere or Cashmere, I don't know how to say it. I'm sure all the French people just cringed so hard at that. But anyways, there we go. And again, I, I'm just in love with this palette. So I, I don't know which one of these would be my favorite. Probably Violette, followed closely by this one. This is just like, this is my comfort zone now. It used to be really bright colors, but now 
the neutrals just have my soul. All right, so let's talk ColourPop. So these are the ones that I have. This is the most recent one that I got, and it's just a very neutral, all matte quad, the kind of thing that I would not have been even remotely interested in two years ago, and yet I am now in love with it <laughs> for its simplicity. That was some winged liner. This one's the She's a Natural Pressed Powder Palette. <laughs> I love it. You can pair it with like black wing liner, brown, colorful, like it's just so easy to work with. So I'm really enjoying that one. Likewise, Going Coconuts. Was, I think a few of you recommended this to me after I did my like favorite neutrals palette video and you didn't steer me wrong. So thank you very much for that. This one is beautiful. And then I may as well bring this one out. So we've got the child, little baby Yoda, he's so cute. And then I just picked up the Mandalorian one as well. So I'll show you the inside. I haven't played with the Mandalorian one, it just got delivered oh, like two days ago I think and I just haven't had a chance yet. So the child is up top and then Mandalorian down here and they work so well together as well. And I'm just, I'm really impressed with the quality of these ones, I really have been enjoying this one in particular, and I suspect I'm going to enjoy this one as well. I like the cooler tones, and then again that like dooky brown that they include, but it's just such a flattering color once it's blended out, and I mean, it's adorable. And then we've got Fine Feathered over here, and these are the kind of colors that just make my eyes really stand out, so I love having these kind of shades available. And then this is just like my favorite color anyways in high tide. I love anything blue, turquoise, green even, um, but I really enjoy having an all turquoise kind of palette. And then we've got Limoncello over here. I love the packaging on it, it just makes me think of a nice like summer picnic. And then there's the color story. I love that they've added the blue in there, but it's not like just a neutral with a pop of blue because you have, you know, the yellows over here and then more like a gr greeny kind of gold, nice warm brown over here, almost verging on red. I just think it's a really pretty and versatile palette for being a rather neutral palette. And then I picked up the Nightmare Before Christmas palette, but I haven't had an opportunity to play with it because November. Uh, but there are the shades, and then there's sandstone. I really like the colors in here. Again, neutral, but with some fun additions, but nothing that's like so pop of color that it's like jarring against the rest of it. Like I'm always drawn to this yellow and then this like olive green over here. Again, it's a palette that I think is beautiful, I just haven't used it very much because it's just gotten lost in the shuffle. So I'm really glad that I've gone through this process of decluttering and reminding myself what I have so that I can bring this one out and play with it some more. And the same can be said for this one, which is the collaboration with Raw Beauty Christie at Forest Sight. Because these shades, especially at this time of year as we're entering winter, I just think they're so winter appropriate. But again, it's just a palette that I've just kept ignoring for the last God only knows how long. But I do think it's really pretty, so I want to bring it out and show it some love. And then these two are fairly new acquisitions for me as well. So this is Stone Cold Fox, a very cool toned neutral palette. I think, frankly, I think it's a little excessive, to be honest. I think they could have probably curated that down significantly, but it is nice to have the range of shades available. Uh, I have done it, I have done a few looks using this and I haven't had any issues with blendability or anything like that, so I wanted to keep it on hand because it does have like every cool tone shade I could ever want is in there. And then this one here, it's a mood. I think this one is so pretty. There's just some really beautiful standout shades, like this one down here, and this one, and even the pressed glitter is just so beautiful. It's 
So now we're going to move on to ABH. So here is Sultry. You have heard me talk about this one a million times because I love it so much. <laughs> I remember seeing pictures of it and just thinking how boring it looked. And then I saw it in store when I was there with my best friend and we swatched it and I immediately put it in the cart. <laughs> and I can't remember if she bought it or not, but I fell instantly in love with it and I have no plans on decluttering this one anytime soon. Likewise, we have Soft Glam. I spilled like lash glue on it and that's the bummer of this like suede packaging, but at any rate, there we have it. This is just such like a easy to use and effortlessly beautiful kind of palette. Again, it doesn't look like much because everything is a little bit more muted and toned down, but Soft Glam is like the perfect name for this palette because it really does create some beautiful, beautiful looks. And then we've got Modern Renaissance. It's sort of an OG palette. And there she is on the inside. I will say, I have never really understood the fervor that this had back in the day. I mean, I know it was one of the first to do a more warm-toned neutral, but I still, like, looking at it in the pan, it always looks a little dull and uninspired to me, if I dare say that. I mean, gosh, don't come for me. But I will say, when it's applied, I always have a great makeup day with this one. Like, it just always looks so beautiful. So I really did hem and haw over whether or not I was going to declutter this one, but I'm glad that I decided to keep it. And then we have the Jackie Ina palette, which is, again, just another beautiful palette. There's some really, really nice shades in here, particularly um, Wigglies. Like, it's this, like, metallic almost rust, almost red, just a very unique and different shade. I think it's so pretty. And then we have the newest one to my collection and the newest one they've just released. And this is, what is this one even called? I can't remember, Primrose, the Primrose palette. And this one includes two cheek products. So I did do a dedicated review on this one and I love it. I love this palette. I will say these blushes did not come to play. Like they are very, very pigmented, go in with a light hand, but I like that because they're also very blendable. And so if you have a deeper complexion, like that's going to show up on you. I just have to basically just tap into the pan and I'm good to go. But these eyeshadows are just beautiful as well. And I find that these are less powdery than, say, Modern Renaissance, which I appreciate. I find this formula easier to work with. And then I have one of the Pro Pigment palettes. This one is Volume 2. And these are very large palettes, but very, very fun, very colorful and very, very pigmented. And I just love the blues that are in here and like the yellowy kind of green. Like they are so, so pretty. And again, I love that you have like the deeper, darker shades and then the nice, fun, bright pops over here. And I just think you can do anything with this palette because it's just so pretty.